We hope the world is better for you because it sure is fucked up in our time. <laughs> Ron and Brian, December 1976. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 92 of the Ron and Brian podcast. I am Ron, as always, joined by the surprise host of this Sunday night's Oscars, Brian. Brian, how goes it today? I, uh, I'm, on, I, I'm on cloud nine. As it you is, should be. Uh, it's, it's, the fa- it's my favorite time of the week. Uh, I get to look at your pretty face. I get to hear your wonderful voice. I get to share the warmth of your existence. Uh, I, no complaints here. All right, fantastic. Well, we'll get uh, we'll get moving right into it then. Um, as you know, last week, Drink of the Week, sponsored by Corona. Um, apparently, they were a little bit offended by our use of the Ivanka Trump uh, voting systems. Uh, so they have pulled off their sponsorship. Uh, so now it's just back to an unsponsored Drink of the Week. Drink of the Week. La, 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 la. Drink of the week. Sancho. Holy. Drink of the week. Drink of the so week. So this past week's, week's poll week. put up a vodka tonic against vodka and soda. Uh, as our listeners know, we have had some challenges with our vote counts over the, the past few weeks. Uh, Brian took it upon himself to purchase those Ivanka Trump voting machines that we tried to use um, the previous week without much success. Um, another challenge this past week um, as you know, we did have a, a sponsorship with the Trump 2020 campaign a few weeks back. The check ended up bouncing, uh, but not before we had already spent that sweet, sweet sponsorship money. So uh, we ended up getting these uh, the Ivanka Trump voting machines recalled because our check bounced. Kind of poetic mm-hmm. justice when you think about it. Um, and then, you know, a uh, mistake on my part, I have to take the heat this week, uh, purchase this app called the shadow app, which I felt would be, um, the most secure way for people to vote and, um, get things, uh, get things on track again. And, uh, turns out it did not. We still do not have verifiable results of the drink of the week. Um, I went out and I spoke to some people, uh, took an informal poll on the street. And so therefore I am officially declaring the winner as kettle one, uh, grapefruit and rose vodka with a little grapefruit seltzer, uh, uh, mixed with it. So cheers to you. One thing I, I, there's actually two things I'd like to say. First is I do not blame yourself for what happened with the shadow app. Uh, the presentation, you know, they came in and uh, sold us on the idea that this was going to be the best, uh, best use of modern technology to tabulate votes. They said, uh, you know, they had some very good connections. Uh, they used the name Hilaria Clintonia quite a few times. Uh, you know, I, it, it carries a lot of weight with us. Um, they, you know, it, it really felt as if this was going to be the best way to tabulate the worldwide voters that we receive for our drink of the week. You made the recommendation. I said, you know what? This is, I agree with you. This is the place to go. So I don't want you to blame yourself. I mean, I what felt I'm, success was was in our taillights. And um, now, you know, we go back to the drawing board and try and figure out a really appropriate way to collect the votes for drink of the week. But if nothing else, um, I have mixed myself up a delightful little cocktail here. What concerns me here is the fact that we were, is that the two nominees were vodka tonic and a vodka soda, and then you went out and made yourself a third drink. Well, I feel in a way this is a vodka soda. I mean, it is a grapefruit soda mixer uh, mixed with vodka, despite the fact that that vodka may have uh, grapefruit and rose undertones to it. Have you ever used a grapefruit for romantic purposes? Uh, I have not. I would think that would sting a bit. Citrus, to me, would uh, probably burn the pee hole. It seems like the kind of thing that uh, kids on the internet are doing now for likes. They probably probably rub some grapefruit on their taint before going to uh, to sun their perennium. Jesus, that would be a terrible move. I, I myself stuck to the rules of the drink of the week poll. 
I made myself a vodka tonic using America's favorite um, uh, vodka Tito's. Should we, I mean, we are influencers on Instagram and on social media in general. Should yes. we try and get people to actually go out and sun their perennium um, after they've rubbed it down with a, a sliced grapefruit? I'm going to tell you why that's a terrible idea, Ron. Uh, <laughs> why is it was that? not that long ago where I tried to sun my perennium. Uh, I went out into the, uh, the, 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 what was it? The national, what is it? What is it? Uh, You're out in the Sequoia Mojave. National Forest, I believe. That was, yes, but, uh, but I, I uh, laid up in one of those redwoods, uh, took off my pants, my underpants, kept the socks on, that's my move, um, and uh, laid down on my back, lifted my legs up behind my head. Uh, it was emotionally, it was a challenging position to get into, but but I gave myself a good 15 minutes of sun right there on the perineum, uh, sent me to the hospital. I think the challenge was the length of time. I think just a quick grapefruit scented sunning of the perineum. I think we try and get that trending over the next week. So you're saying I should not have used, I can't believe this is not butter. Probably not your best move. Because I slathered it all over my <laughs> balls, taint, chest, tits, and ass. Most definitely not a good idea. Well, regardless, uh, we've got some good drinks. I mean, vodka is always a good choice. Uh, but we never also now have our Tavor uh, crafted boxes in hand, both of us. So we do have some beers that we will be putting up against one another. I don't think we've decided what they're going to be for the coming week. Um, but we will definitely figure out a, a, a legitimate poll to get up on our Facebook and Twitter pages uh, to have you folks vote. I think the challenge here is not the type of drink we're going to have, but how can we maintain the, uh, the, the accuracy and the integrity of our Drink of the Week poll? But if you want integrity, let's talk about the good folks at Tavor, always giving you a fantastic selection of beers to put together a crate, get it shipped to your house for one flat low shipping price. And Brian, uh, if people wanted to go to Tavor.com, download the app and sign up, is there a referral code that you can shoot out their way so that they can if get 10 bucks off their order? The fine folks at Tavor reached out to us and said, hey, Ron and Brian, here is your Tavor code 525401. That's T-A-V-O-U-R in your uh, mobile devices app store. Download Tavor, sign up, register, use the promo code 525401, and you will be letting the kind folks at Tavor know that Ron and Brian are important players in the world of internet craft beer drinking all right so keep an eye out on our facebook and twitter page for our upcoming drink of the week poll or as always just go to ron and brian podcast.com with links to all of our social media this week in racism racism Racism. Racism. So kind of a shock this past week. Uh, Professor Shaheen Borna knocked off two-time defending champion Patricia Zamet, 56% to 44%. She goes to the bench with two wins, hoping that her performance was strong enough uh, to get her maybe a three or four seed when we get to the end of the year Racism Madness Tournament. Shaheen moving on, looking for win number two. Uh, very rare that we see the uh the non-audio contestants get a win we saw it with ethan kozak in uh, the regular season and almost in the postseason last year shaheen coming in with a, a slight margin of victory you had predicted it would go the other way thoughts on the results this week shocking i think uh you know as you uh said it earlier uh non-audio candidates for a racist of the week really are walking into the poll at a disadvantage. It is uh, one leg tied behind their back. It is uh, uh, one arm uh, handcuffed to uh, the uh, roof of a cop car. It is being covered in blackface when you walk in to a Baptist church. I mean, it really is sitting there saying to yourself, um, you know, I'm up for the challenge, but I'm probably going to take an L on this one. Shaheen Borna not making that happen. Um, anytime you've got a, a university professor who is so racist that he's going to call the police when a African-American student in his class refuses to change his seat. Um, listen, it spoke to the people. The people heard it. They sat there. Um, actually, they didn't hear it. Quite ironic use of that <laughs> word. Um, 
but they uh you know they they recognize real racism when uh when it's when it's elevated to uh to that level and uh clearly when you're just uh, uh using text and that overcomes an actual bona fide audio clip uh, Shaheen Borna, I tip my cap to you. And Shaheen has some stiff competition this week as we do have another contender with some audio to go along with it. Uh, a white parent attending a school board meeting for Saline School District in Saline, Michigan, made racist comments towards other parents uh, during this meeting. Tom Bertel interrupted a father who was telling about how his Hispanic son was being bullied uh, by asking him why he left Mexico. This. Oh, I already played that one. Maybe I should hit the right one hmm. why did you stay in mexico <laughs> clearly the crowd uh not a fan of that comment uh he then also went on to make a comment about being white in a black neighborhood find people white walking on my neighborhood see what happens so i'm not exactly sure what he implied but i get the impression he was implying it's not a good idea to be white and go into a black neighborhood uh, ironically, I think this is what kind of maybe puts this over the top a little bit. This specific meeting was being held to address a racist, a recent incident where white students at the Saline High School had a racist Snapchat group targeting three black students at the school. So you're going to a meeting specifically called because your kids are being racist and then you decide to be racist as well. Thoughts on this week's matchup between Tom Bertel and Shaheen Borna. I think uh, Tom's bringing some, uh, he's bringing some smoke. I don't know how much heat there is. Um, this one, I'm going to say is a toss up. Would not be shocked if Shaheen rolls in to his third week. All right. Well, as always, you, the fans, decide who the worst of the worst is. Uh, also, go to Facebook and Twitter. We will have our This Week in Racism polls up. You can let us know if Shaheen deserves to be a two time winner or if Tom can matriculate to being a This Week in Racism champion. We're going to keep moving on with our Beef of the Week. Ron and Brian's Beef of the Week. Brian, what's what's bothering you this week? There's something bothering me, and I don't know exactly the best way to describe it. I guess just let's, the, let's talk through it and see if we can uh, if we can get there. All right, there's a lot of different things going on in here, and I'm a f- I, I'm definitely uh, aware that I may be entering the realm of casual racism, and mm. I and, and that's not me. I'm not that person. No, not at all. Okay, so that's not where this is coming from. But I have been irked this past week by the number of subway riders in the New York City subway system who are wearing face masks. Right, right, because uh, of the recent coronavirus scare. Which has barely uh, had any effort in, uh, in New York. True. It's in New Jersey, but nothing reported in New York just yet. Yeah, every every disease is uh, is in New Jersey. I mean, uh, no fair, offense fair to New point. Jersey, kind of offense to New Jersey. But the <laughs> point is, is that um, there is a it, it, it's there also the uh, these face mask wearers are almost exclusively Asian. Okay, again, I think uh, a cultural thing, but go on. Now, my issue is the fact that you know you're you're it, it, is it that they're too good to breathe the same air I'm feel I'm breathing. No, I don't think it's that. And, I, and interestingly enough, I actually uh, read. I want to say it was uh, someone on Twitter who was uh, who is of Asian descent and kind of commenting on this. And um, apparently, the mindset is: well, yes, it is a layer of protection from infectious diseases that may be out there. It's also a case of these individuals wanting to protect other people in case they themselves have this disease and aren't aware of it. Because remember, it's got an incubation period of about two weeks where you can have the disease and not actually know that you have it. So you're saying they're trying to pr- protect me? I- I'm saying it's not. You know, I think it's a mix. I think they want to protect themselves. But I think there is also a, uh, a level of consideration for people around them as well to make sure that if they are sick, that they're not contaminating the general public. Now, now I do feel like I was casually racist. I mean, a smidge. 
a smidge. It just, not, not enough to get on this week in racism, but enough where we'd be like, Brian, Brian. But I get it. I get what you're saying. I could see where your offense would come from. It's it, 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 it was, it's something that's been bothering me. It seems like every day this week, Monday through Friday, there were more and more people, particularly Asians, that were wearing face masks on the subway, on the morning commute, and on the evening commute. And, it, and it, it made me feel a certain way. It made me feel like the air I was breathing was dirtier than what they would accept for their own bodies. Now, have you had any experiences lately where like, you've shook somebody's hand and then they immediately put hand sanitizer on? No. Because that you can be offended over. That I think I've seen people do that and that seems offensive to me. That actually is a, is offensive. But I, I've, uh, I've I've tried to to stick to the fist pump. Now. The fist pump's always good, or like the just the arm smash against each other is also good too. I like to do that when I'm rounding third and <laughs> uh, after hitting a home run, and I like to do the uh, forearm smash with the third base coach. Have you ever had an instance where you've leaned in to lick the side of someone's face and they pull away? Because I find that rude when I do it. Are you the one pulling your face away? No, no, I'm the one going into, you know, co-workers. I, I think, you know, for me, it's kind of maybe it's a, again, kind of a cultural thing. I like to just run my tongue up the side of somebody's face when I meet them. Now, my question to you is you're not afraid of licking women's makeup up. Um, You know what? If uh, if it's a if it's a good quality makeup, it shouldn't make a difference. And that's okay. that's on them, not on me. Do you uh, kind of. Do you kind of like dry off the saliva off your tongue or do you kind of like... Yeah, I mean, like I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not going in for like a wet lick, just kind of a, just kind of a, you know, just a run. Just, a, you know, I think you can really um, get to know someone based on their taste. And then we wonder why we were never invited back to the Vatican. It's a good, it's a, it's a good point. You might have something there. I mean, when you lick the Pope, I, I thought that it was a, a, a sign of affection. But now in hindsight, I'm thinking that might have been a bad call. He was very dusty. I'm not going to lie. So dusty. <laughs> so dusty. So uh, my beef this week, Brian, is with uh, with my back. Uh, oh. Yeah. So Physical. Uh, oh, no. What happened here? As, as you know, I was up in uh, lovely Syracuse, New York, for work mm. this week and had a little bit of a snowstorm overnight. So we had a, a lot of snow to clear off the car before we could get on the road on Friday. And I'm not going to, I mean, I didn't. I didn't exert a lot of effort, but apparently there was some twisting motion that I did that just completely wrenched my lower back. And now I'm like, like I can sit, like I can sit here and do this podcast and it's fine. But like if I stand up, I have to do like that old person lean forward because if I can't, I literally can't stand straight up. No. And like bending and, and like walking up and down stairs is very painful. And I know it's, you know, it's something that happens as you get older, uh, but it just really kind of sucks. But you're a young man in his mid-20s. <laughs> That's what we keep telling the people. But my back feels much, much older than I actually am. Ah, oh, geez. I'm sorry to hear that. It happens. I will. Uh, I'll get through it. A little Ben Gay, a uh, little heat, a um, little crack. Really, I think we'll take the edge off. I always knew Ben was gay. <laughs> so let's see. What do we have to talk about this week? It's been a rather so uneventful much week. Um, but, of course, uh, beginning of the week brought us the State of the Union address. Um, did you watch the State of the Union? Could not watch any of it. Agreed. Had no uh, no need to watch it. And based on the recap I saw, um, yeah, I, I didn't miss much. Yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, um the uh, the impeachment uh, uh, testimony that never happened in the Senate, the battle that's been going on since last fall has now been wrapped up. It felt like it was going to be Trump on a uh, victory lap, and I had zero interest in exposing my ears or my eyes or my brain to anything along those lines. Now, you had asked me, and uh, I can indulge you if you would like, you had asked me my thoughts on the State of the Union. Not not the address, but the actual what is our State of the Union. And I, I had taken the time to jot down some thoughts. Are you still interested in hearing my take on it? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it's one of the highlights of my uh, year is when you take a step back from the day-to-day, look at America at a macro level, and provide us with your particularly um, entertaining yet insightful uh, views on what's going on in this country. Well, I think what we're seeing is an absolute mess on both sides of the aisle. 
And and I don't think that comes as any surprise to anybody who follows uh, our country right now. But as far as the GOP goes, they are no longer interested in defending the Constitution. They're more concerned with defiling it. They aren't interested in the rule of law. They're just interested in ruling. Uh, this past week, we've seen GOP senator after GOP senator admit that Trump did something wrong while quickly following up by saying that they are going to vote to acquit him. Many have said that they are confident that Trump has learned his lesson from this and won't do it again. However, that has never been the case at any point in his life. He will only become more emboldened by an acquittal and will get worse, not better. We're already seeing that with his responses to Mitt Romney and his removal of Lieutenant Colonel Vindman and his, uh, his, bro- his twin brother from the National Security Council. Um, he and his family have profited from his presidency more than anything we have seen in our country's history. He has ignored rules and laws and ethics more than any administration in history. His trade policies have bankrupted farms and families. He continuously looks to find ways to strip benefits from those who need them most. His tax plan has widened the gaps between the haves and the have-nots, raised the deficit to its highest level ever, locked children in cages, cozied up to despots and dictators, embarrassed us on the world stage, removed the separation between church and state, emboldened racists in the United States and around the world, demeaned any media outlet that dare challenge him, and weaponized the DOJ against his enemies. Despite all of this, he still retains the support of most of the GOP. Unfortunately, there's little doubt in my mind that the Democrats would act any differently if Trump was a member of their party. The goal of politics today is to gain control and never let go of it. The Democrats struggle to take control because of the level of dysfunction in their party. Say what you will about the GOP, but they manage to present a unified front. Tulsi is suing Hillary because she doesn't like what Hillary said about her. Hillary doesn't like Bernie because of what he said about her. Rashid Tlaib led a crowd in booing Hillary because Hillary doesn't like Bernie. The GOP are the psychotic adults at the table, while the Democrats busy themselves with the kind of childish bickering that the rest of us outgrew after middle school. What we saw from the Iowa caucuses this week reflects the exact state of the Democratic Party, an absolute shit show run by people that learned nothing from the lessons of the 2016 election. We are nine months away from the most important election in our nation's history. That level of hyperbole has been used in the past, but I truly believe that's what we're facing in 2020. The future of our nation is at stake, the soul of our nation is at stake, and the humanity of our nation is at stake. We all need to find a comfort level with the fact that whomever wins the White House this election is not going to be the most qualified person for the job. We are nowhere close at this point to get our politics back to that level. What we do need to do is to make sure we don't leave the most deranged person ever to have this job to keep it. Let's stem the bleeding first and then work on repairing the major wounds in the coming years. That's my take on the State of the Union, Brian. God, that's depressing. Uh, yeah, as, so I, as I wrote it, hear. I was like, should I try and make it a little bit more upbeat? And then I was like, no. I don't know that there's a ton to be upbeat about right now. If that is genuinely the way you feel about the country right now, I think that's what you what you have to say. Um, I think what was where I, I mean, obviously, I, I you know, you're the smartest person that I I interact with. But. The part that I think you really nailed was in saying that the Democrats are um, uh, cannibalizing themselves and it is uh, making the uh, the general election seem, you know, even more and more remote uh, as a possibility of uh, this nation seeing a Democrat winning the White House in 2020. This is uh, um, at this point, I think Trump's on a victory lap. And uh, we're going to have four years of of, of literally um, unhinged Trump. I think uh, you know the fact that he is uh, um, you know he's he, he he can't be he realizes now that he can't be stopped. Um, that Congress is not going to act as a check on him. That ultimately, the, as long as he can as as long as he controls the Senate, meaning the Republican Party, because let's face it, Trump is the Republican Party at this point. Um, I genuinely see four years from now that man uh, arguing that he should be reelected to a third term. 
I mean, there was there was a few people. There was an op-ed in the Washington Post this week. Uh, Bill Maher commented it on his show this week that you know it was probably one of the best weeks of the Trump presidency. You know, he he gets acquitted um, in the impeachment. Uh, the Democrats have the Democrats have the debacle at the Iowa caucuses. Uh, an extremely good jobs report comes out. Um, the the first step in a trade deal with China is signed. So yeah, I mean, and he's at 49 percent uh, approval rating. He currently has the highest approval rating of his presidency so far. So as yeah. we continuously say, the Democrats will screw this up. Um, and I think you know, in looking at the debate last night uh, in New Hampshire, don't know that there was anything I saw that uh, dissuaded me from thinking that. You know what? I'm even going to take it a step further and say not only is it the fact that the Democrats are going to screw this up, but what we also saw this past week and maybe week and a half or so is literally the uh, refusal of uh, Republican congressmen, senators, senator, uh, state senator, like uh, literally across the board in their sheepish fear to even criticize him. But the, the, one, the, the one person you have to give credit to is Mitt Romney. Surprisingly absolutely. enough, a man whose faith means so much to him that his faith led him to vote his conscience knowing the repercussions he will face from it. The fact that the, um, the fact that the Trump defense, his defense team threw out there the argument that if the president commits a crime while or or commits a crime or any type of ethics violation while believing that it is in the nation's best interest, then there is um, no way that you can hold him accountable or, 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 or subject him to any punishment. The fact that they argued, I think it was Dershowitz that argued in the uh, in the Senate hearing that Trump felt that obtaining dirt on Joe Biden was in the nation's interest for the upcoming election. And therefore, what Trump did was perfectly legal. Right. And the fact that he said this and the 53 Republican senators all sat there with their with the exception of uh, Romney, sat there with their lips shut, nodding their head, saying, uh, OK, well, uh, we're just going to let that slide because he's our president. Uh, I literally cannot put into words my disdain for the Republicans. I mean, the the whole impeachment here, it wasn't a hearing. They didn't take testimony from anyone. The uh, the the House team uh, gave their uh, uh, speech. The Trump team gave their speech and then everyone voted. There were no this, this wasn't a hearing. This wasn't uh, uh, any type of uh uh, trial or whatnot. This literally was, I'm going to give a speech and then we're going to vote along party lines. It, it literally was a sham. Yeah. I mean, you have no no real evidence other than what was presented by the House. Uh, and yeah, to your point, no, uh, no, no witnesses whatsoever. Yeah. So I think I think the terrorists in Guantanamo Bay are getting uh, 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 more open hearings than what we just saw in the Senate. And, and what's uh, amazing as well is after all this goes down this past week, uh, Eric Trump happened to be hired as a director on the board of a Russian copper company based in Siberia. No, no. I shit you not. Is that a joke? Is that, tell me that's not true. This, uh, this, is, uh, this is what is being reported on a few different news outlets. It also, coincidentally enough, uh. happens to be the same copper company that just a few months ago uh, made a bulk purchase of 70,000 copies of Donald Trump Jr.'s new book, Triggered. I give up. Yeah, no, I, I literally, it's out of it, the, um, uh, the hypocrisy is just out of control and it's going to go unchecked. Yeah. It's going to fucking go unchecked. So, <laughs> oh my God, I literally am speechless that what they just wanted to do an investigation on uh, for Hunter Biden in the Ukraine, literally the same week they're going to do in Russia. Ah, oh, fuck them. I swear to God. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, it's something crazy. And but again, you know, the Democrats have shown in Iowa that they can't even count votes properly. You know, I don't know that we still have. I think the AP has refused to 
um, officially announce a winner in Iowa because even though 100% of the votes have been counted, they're questioning the validity of some of the counting. So at the moment, it looks like Bernie got the majority of the votes and the delegates with Pete Buttigieg finishing second. But I don't know that that's I don't know if it's ever going to be official. I don't know how you handle this situation in Iowa right now. What is a caucus? I'm still not 100 sure what a caucus is. And I know I know for a fact four years ago during the 2016 campaign, you and I sat during the podcast and I remember asking you what a caucus was in terms of how it differs from a primary. Now, I know a primary is really based on the popular vote. The candidate who gets the most votes wins the delegates for that state. There is uh, a system that, that a minority of the states use. It's called a caucus. Um, and I, I do not have a firm grasp. And I, I understand your frustration. I can even see the look on your face right now. Uh, Brian, I'm, I cannot believe that I'm going to have to explain this to you again, you simpleton. But what in what is how, I don't understand how caucuses work. So I, so basically, all right. So y- y- your state either has a caucus or a primary. So the the main difference is that you know your primary elections are run by state and local governments, whereas caucuses are private events that are directly run by the political parties themselves. So that's why it's not a case of like all these people go to the voting booths and place votes like it's it's an event and you know people people go and they can and that's why it's called caucusing because it's not you know you're not going to vote you're going you know you're going trying to bring in all the people attending the caucus to you know support your candidate because that's why okay. apparently even in a caucus you know after that's why if you look at tallies for caucuses there is a first round and then there's a final round because they will do a first round of vote counting um, for people. Um, and then if you're, I think, I think how it works is if your candidate receives less than 1% of the vote in the first round, then those delegates can change and go to another candidate in the final round. So, like, I know, like, uh, all of the, I think in Iowa, everybody who had caucused for Andrew Yang, you know, when he came in below the 1% mark, um, you know, or maybe it's maybe it's higher than 1%. I forget what the total is, but if, he, if you don't finish in a certain amount of votes, then you, those votes can go to another candidate if you want. So a lot of the Yang, I think about 7,000 of the Yang votes actually moved over to Bernie Sanders in the final round of voting. I, when I was in college once, I caucused for Yang. Um, <laughs> ended up in the ER, was not able to sit for uh, about five days while the stitches were uh, were taking. So, and again, and I still don't understand the difference between the popular vote and, and the state delegates. I mean, I guess, again, I think it depends on the different counties um, because at 100% of the vote, Bernie Sanders... Uh, finished with a little over 45,800 votes, about 2,600 ahead of Pete Buttigieg. Um, But Buttigieg ends up with 26.2% of the state delegates versus Bernie getting 26.1. Yeah, okay. But I don't, it's, I I know you just described it to me and I'm sure that in your mind it makes sense. (laughs) But what I'm visualizing is people meeting up like in a, a, a library and, and they, they kind of just like um, sit in like the four bunches, one for each candidate. I mean, and then they count and then they just and then and then they, they just count again. You're not I mean, you're not wrong. You you literally have, you know, if you if you saw some of this on the news, there were literally auditoriums where people were sitting in bleachers based on who they wanted to vote for. And then after the first round, if they wanted to change their vote, they could get up and they could move to another bleacher to show that they were now supporting that candidate. If there was a tie, a- there was coin flips to settle ties in certain areas. I mean, it, it is it is I mean, there's no it, it's not surprising that the, the whole process got show. fucked up. Yeah, it just seems so f- uh, 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 amateurish. It seems something that it's it's it feels like something you would do in the fourth grade when uh, voting for uh, uh, you know class president. 
I, I think it'll be very surprising if Iowa, because again, Iowa always prides itself on being the first, um, the first primary caucus in the U.S. leading up to the whole election process. If you look at it from the Democratic side, the person to win uh, Iowa in the last 11 caucuses went on to be the candidate and win the presidency the last seven times. Um, so, I mean, it carries a lot of weight to win Iowa. Um, but mm -hmm. now that you can't even really say who won it, um, will it be the same well, in, in two or four years when they do it again? I think the fact that we know it was you, you can you can clearly see that uh, Sanders and uh, uh, Mayor Pete walked away from Iowa with their head up high. And I, and they I think have momentum going into New Hampshire. The fact that Elizabeth Warren and to me and maybe not for maybe not so much to you. Uh, for me to see that Joe Biden finished fourth was a real eye opener. It was really uh, surprising. I, you know, uh, I do understand that uh, Biden that does not necessarily uh, resonate well in the Midwest, but uh, I really thought that he was going to uh, have a better showing. I, and I agree. I think if you, for me, for me, for, uh, for for me, three surprises. I think is how well Mayor Pete did. Um, how poorly Joe Biden did, but also how well Amy Klobuchar did. I mean, you know, I think it was a very surprising uh, fifth place finish, and, and she finished ahead of Joe Biden in a number of counties in Iowa. So that, to me, was very surprising. Uh, your girl, Tulsi, not, not great. Started off with 334 votes in the first round, uh, which then dropped to 17 in the second round. Now, does that mean 17 people in the entire state stood steadfast and said, my vote's for Tulsi? Correct. Why are the Democrats so afraid of Hillary? <laughs> Why are they so afraid? Obviously, I know the answer is that she kills people. Right. And that uh, Jeffrey Epstein maybe did not kill himself. Um, but God damn, it's like the woman is speaking truth. And now She's uh, speaking truth, Ron. Now early polling for New Hampshire has Mayor Pete... And uh, Bernie as the two favored um, with Elizabeth Warren in third. You know, again, if if Joe Biden, I think what Joe Biden is really trying to do is is trying to hang in there till South Carolina because he's a 20 point favorite in South right. Carolina with that primary coming up in two weeks. So, you know, the question is, you know, is he convincing enough voters in other states to stay with him? You know, will South Carolina give his candidacy a boost or is he just going to be in there? you know, spending money and not not doing anything. Well, what I think Biden's uh, selling point, I, I saw him on the news a couple of times this week. Um, he is really selling the electability angle on himself. No question. He's taking the stance of uh, Buttigieg, not electable. Bernie Sanders, not electable. Elizabeth Warren, not electable. If you want to uh, put up a candidate that has a shot at beating Trump, vote for Joe Biden, he's the only candidate that, that has a chance at winning. Which, when you really think about it, is uh, not the biggest selling point for a political candidate. No. Hey, I'm the only one that has a chance of us, of <laughs> and, this group here. And his competition isn't going to get any easier. You know, uh, after the, the results of the Iowa caucus, Mayor Bloomberg, you know, significantly increased his ad buy, doubled the size of his staff from 1,000 to 2,000 people uh, to show that he's in it for the long run. After last night's debate... Amy Klobuchar raised two million dollars overnight for her campaign. Really, one of the one of the largest um, fundraising halls in a twenty four hour period that she's seen in her entire candidacy. So, were you were you aware that there was going to be a a, a debate last night? I was aware. Yes, I knew that there was a debate leading up to New Hampshire. I didn't. I was not aware of that. When is New Hampshire next week? Uh, next week. Yes, I want to say okay. on Monday or Tuesday. Do you know when the next debate is? Because I feel like I should I should pay attention and watch the next. I don't one. know offhand. We'll have to we'll have to do that. Maybe we'll, we haven't live tweeted a debate in a while, so maybe we'll I, work I on to. doing that for the next one. And and I'll just ask one more, and then let's move on sure. because I uh, uh, I feel like I'm just uh, uh, quizzing you nonstop, <laughs> like you are this wise sage. Um, what is the likelihood for Bloomberg to really start to participate in the Democratic? Uh, uh, process i guess is the word i'm really thinking of um you know he wasn't part of any of the debates to date uh he was not even on the ballot in uh in 
Iowa. I don't think he's on the ballot for uh, consideration for New Hampshire. You know, he says he's running for presidency, but right now it feels like he's a third party candidate. Well, he's he's on the ballot, but he hasn't really gotten much traction and he hasn't he hasn't qualified for any of the debates lately. Um, I mean, he did get he received he actually beat uh, your girl Tulsi by uh, three votes, three votes in Iowa, getting uh, getting 20 votes. Um, And he will be uh, he will be a a candidate to be selected in New Hampshire. But I believe he was only polling around one percent in New Hampshire. So he is finding a lot of difficulty gaining traction. And you would think his, you know, Iowa notwithstanding, you would you would think he'd have some opportunity in New Hampshire, you know, being a northern state, being mm-hmm. one that can kind of, you know, maybe lean blue at times. Uh, but he is he's he's got a real uphill battle. Uh, but he does have a potential now that they've started to loosen up the debate rules a bit because they had tightened them when there was like 20 or 21 yeah. people. Now that, that they that have lunacy. now that they have loosened the rules, they've they've basically they've rolled out new rules. And here it is. The next debate is going to be February 19th in Las Vegas. Um, so you can either meet a delegate threshold or a polling threshold to qualify for that. So okay. he has a few different options. Um, but you know, he, he possibly, you know, could skip uh, some primaries and focus on super Tuesday. So uh, there's a lot to say, you know, it's a lot to see what happens in the next few weeks. Um, I don't know, again, I just don't know that he's going to get the amount of traction that would get him to uh, get him to the convention. I, I, he, to me, he probably has the best chance of beating Trump. You know, Trump's, Trump's whole argument is, Uh, I'm an incredible businessman. I negotiate great deals. Um, I don't think Klobuchar can even respond to that. Andrew Yang is going to sit there and say, I'm going to give everybody $1,000, but let's pretend that inflation won't go up accordingly. Uh, Buttigieg, mayor of a small town. Uh, Bernie, seemingly out of touch uh, boomer. Who am I leaving out? Uh, Elizabeth Warren got the electability question. Uh, if there's a candidate out there that that can beat Trump, to me, it is not Biden, but it's Bloomberg. And but and Bloomberg is still polling below Tom Steyer, you know, another billionaire that got himself into the race. So mm. you know, are 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 people on the left just gun shy about getting another billionaire uh, in a place you know who isn't really going to represent the values of their party? Well, unfortunately, they're going to need to because the values of their party have jumped so far left that I feel they are out of touch with uh, uh, the moderate middle. Well, let's let's put politics to the side and let's discuss the really big news of the past week, the Super Bowl. Woo! And, of course, more importantly, our Super Bowl prop bets that you and I went up against each other in. Uh, so we both correctly picked the winner of the game. You, we both took Kansas City, giving a point and a half. Wasn't even that close. Kansas City winning by 11. Uh, but that was one of, uh, one of few that I was able to hit. I mean, you pretty much ran the table. You picked... The over-under, you picked the under, which came in at 51 against an over-under of 54 and a half. You correctly uh, predicted uh, Mahomes as the MVP. You picked Tails as the coin toss. Uh, you picked the under for the national anthem at 122.5 seconds, uh, so a little over two minutes. Um, came in at a minute 52, not even close. You nailed that one. My girl... My girl Demi has never disappointed me, um, even when she was uh, hitting the spoon. Yep. never disappointed me. <laughs> you know, you I hit. Knew, I knew that she she was she had greatness in her. Yes, you hit Trump tweeting uh, during the game. You said yes. Or you said no. A Rod won't be shown. So the other ones you really missed. Uh, oh, you also hit no players getting arrested after the game. So you, the only ones you missed were the Gatorade color. You said blue. It was orange. Uh, you missed the uh, first TD score. You said it was going to be a 49ers running back. It ended up being Mahomes. And you said uh, for a scoring drive, taking less time than the national anthem, you said no. Uh, but that actually happened on the last scoring drive when the Chiefs scored a touchdown in 13 seconds. Uh, but otherwise, mm-hmm. you ran the table. So uh, as we had bet uh, $100 going to charity, I received your message earlier this week through the shadow app where you said, Ron, uh, send that hundred dollars to a charity near and dear to my heart, the North American man, boy, love association. I thought, you know, I thought maybe it was a misstep on your part, 
but you you were very adamant you kept sending me messages through this app um and it was weird because you kept misspelling your name but i didn't think anything of it but regardless um you know you are a boy lover and a hundred dollars in your name has gone to nambla so congratulations to you I'm not sure that was uh, messages coming from me. I believe... Listen, I understand the votes may not have been correct in in the Shadow app. Are you saying now that someone may have hacked it and sent inappropriate messages to me posing as you? What I'm saying is, do you remember using the WhatsApp uh, app on your phone recently and uh, clicking on a video link in uh, one of your chats with... uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he sent me uh, some some cat videos. It was very unlike him, but I, I appreciated it. Wait I a think... minute. Did I get Jeff Bezos? I think you got Bezos. Son of a bitch. I, I'm going to tell you something. I do believe that the uh, North American Man Boy Love Association is uh, no longer... Uh, uh, operating uh, as uh, as a known entity, I think they've been driven underground uh, due to uh, I don't know. I think there's a, there's a stigma that was attached to that group in the eighties. Well, that's a hundred bucks really I'm not to recover back. from. Well, I guess then. Uh, so, so you don't love boys, is what you're saying? What I'm saying is I prefer girls. Okay. Um, so, where would you like me to uh, send that hundred dollars to charity? I think what we should do is um, I think we should uh, uh, put it up to the Facebook listeners. Okay. I think I'm going to uh, – I will create a poll. I will uh, put up uh, two or three different options and the uh, and let the people vote. It's a lot of polls we have going up this week. Listen, um, if uh, you keep talking about the uh, North American Man Boy Love Association, you're going to get another poll coming up. Hey-o. Mm-hmm. hi Hi-o. All right. Well, congratulations. Um, any thoughts on today's kickoff? Actually, no. The, uh, you know what? Right. I just thought about okay. it. I would like it to go to some type of animal charity. Oh, okay. Very nice. Uh, what about what about the animals that were hurt in uh, Australia? Um, I'm sure there's probably something, so we can we can take a look for that. So there you go. The American Red Cross. Uh, <laughs> the Red Cross is helping the Australian animals. No. They, they're always helpful, and I believe they take a nice chunk for administrative costs. They certainly do with that. Those bastards. Uh, so your thoughts, we are, uh, just speaking of football, we are on kickoff weekend of the XFL. Um, how are you feeling about the uh, the new league? Are, there, uh, are they starting tomorrow? They're actually starting today. Um, we've what? got the, uh, the Dragons facing the Defenders right now. I had no idea that there was a uh, that they had started. What chat are, are they on? Uh, they, TV they or is on, it cable? They're like, on ABC. The... Get out of yeah, here! They got they got a whole network deal and everything. I am shocked. <laughs> so yeah, so Seattle is facing uh, DC right now. Uh, I believe there's another game later today, and then two games tomorrow. Are we going to be supporting this league, or are we going to be acting as if it doesn't exist? I, you know, I I feel competition is is always good, um, and you know, I I would hate to see Vince Man, Vince McMahon lose a lot of money. Although he is projecting that he's going to lose three hundred and fifty to four hundred million dollars on the league over the next three years. I read this week that the stock of the WWE is uh, fell by about a forty percent this week. It did actually so drop lost, because they uh, they let go of two executives. But I will tell you this: now is a great time to buy WWE stock because it took a hit. Because or it took because... a hit, and it's just going to go back up. the The WWE is going to continue to make money, regardless of of who runs it on its leadership. They've got they've got TV contracts. They've got merchandise sales. They've got their own streaming network. Um, you know, they've got a lot of marketing partnerships. Uh, I think you grab that stock, and I, I think you see it bounce back over the next six months to a year. My fear with the WWE, and this is just you know speaking uh, off the cuff, unprepared, um, is that they really have not had the distribution deal in the Middle East that I think we were all kind of banking on them. Uh, being able to deliver. Uh, Saudi Arabia was going to be one of their uh, uh, marquee locations that was going to uh, uh, really uh, push them forward. Um, Unfortunately, they've not been able to uh, hammer out the uh, uh, 
uh, an agreement to show WW in Saudi Arabia. And I think that uh, I, that's making I, me I put their stock as I up. assume that's sarcasm. What do you mean? Well, they'll be back in Saudi Arabia uh, once again for uh, a Super Showdown card. Oh. I thought they weren't going. I thought that they did not have the television distribution there. I, you know, I'm not sure about the uh, the the what you call it TV distribution, um, but they are they are definitely uh, going to be back in Saudi Arabia. Now, will they be letting women uh, wrestle over there? Um, they do let do women. The divas they stay do let home? women wrestle. However, um, the outfits that the women wear while they wrestle uh, is a little bit different than what we have here in the states. But yeah. Do they wrestle in burkas? <laughs> Almost. Uh, so yes, yeah, February 27th at King Fahd International Stadium in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Yeah, af- after they did that uh, K- Khashoggi shit, I uh, I cannot support uh, Saudi Arabia. Well, and there there have been a number of wrestlers that did not go on the previous Saudi Arabia trip. I know John Cena doesn't want to perform in Saudi Arabia anymore. Um, a few other ones uh, were left, but you know if you have a lot of people that are under contract. They got to do what the boss tells them. Mm, yeah, so I, I, the last time I was there, I had some bad tahini, <laughs> and I will not be going. I will not be returning. So before we get uh, off the subject of the Super Bowl, thoughts on the commercials uh, for this past year? Um, I didn't find them particularly remarkable. Uh, I will admit not paying as much attention as I had in previous years, but even the day after, um, it did not feel there was anything really trailblazing. Yeah, I think there were uh, more there bad still... ones than good ones. Um, would you like to guess what the top rated uh, ad meter was for USA Today as far as Super Bowl commercials? Of course. Was it Baby uh, Mr. Pino? Um, sup- uh, I guess maybe not surprisingly, no. Let me see where that one came in. Uh, that one came in at 23rd. I think a lot of people 23rd. showed. Twenty third. I think people. I think people saw through it in that it was just kind of trying to rip off Baby Yoda, and I think people are okay. like, "Yeah." The number one was the Bill Murray uh, Groundhog Day commercial for Jeep. Uh, I remember that. I didn't think it was that great. I mean, I remember chuckling, but that was that was the number one commercial. That was number one. The uh, the Hyundai okay. Smart Park commercial with uh, John Krasinski, uh, Rachel Dretch, and uh, Chris. Uh, Chris, whatever, it's Captain America there. Myers. Came in second. Um, okay. The Google commercial with Loretta, the, the old man trying to remember his uh, deceased wife using his Google assistant, that came in third. The Doritos Cool Ranch uh, with Little Nas X and Sam Elliott came in fourth. And then the Rocket Mortgage commercial with uh, Jason Momoa came in fifth. You know what? There. Uh, Jason Momoa, I thought was the best commercial. That was a good one. The one the the one that people liked least, the one that came in last, came in sixty second. The Donald Trump campaign criminal justice reform commercial. I did not see that. People hated it, and also it's the lowest viewed one on YouTube so far. Well, YouTube we know is a bastion for liberalism, and <laughs> socialism. Yes, so it is. I don't expect. That uh, you know that 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 that, that is not the uh, the mode to get the truth out. So uh, also this week, um, uh, many reports of celebrities uh, reports. revealing that they have cancer. Uh, first one was uh, I guess we did Rush come out first or did Shannon Doherty come out first? Rush Rush came out. Shannon showed up the next day. This was Ron a great week for cancer. Uh, earlier, I believe it was on Monday, possibly Tuesday, uh, depending on uh, your time zone, where you live. Rush Limbaugh steps out um, as a uh, stage four uh, uh, lung cancer uh, patient, uh, announcing on his radio show that there is going to be some upcoming time where he is not going to be able to do his uh, regular broadcast is uh, uh, listeners immediately uh, rushing to show get it rushing <laughs> rushing to show um, uh, the, their support and not only that and this is where I I felt it was incredible was that during the uh, State of the Union uh, Melania is announced and she gives the national. Medal of Freedom for Heroicism to Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, that... Uh, what an offensive piece of shit move that was. Basically. 
I mean, and I'm not saying that we're the kind of people that are going to root for cancer at any point, um, but, you know, it, it certainly feels very uh, poetic that uh, Rush has come down with some significant illness, especially lung cancer, uh, considering how many years he uh, stated that there was no conclusive proof that nicotine was addictive. He said there were no links to cigarettes causing emphysema, lung cancer, or heart disease. I mean, he just, just constantly put down all of the science that backed that, and then he ends up getting lung cancer. It feels, I hope it he feels poetic to me. I genuinely hope he dies because it will, um, in this instance, be well deserved. And then you know you you also remember him uh, making fun of Michael J. Fox having Parkinson's disease. Um, re, the, rep- the list of the list of t- you posted something on uh, I believe it was Twitter. It could be it could have been our Facebook page where it was just a list of quotes from Rush Limbaugh over the years of. Um, outrageously offensive things that he said to uh, promote uh, whatever agenda uh, it is that he uh, supports. Um, and I got to say, you know, if if uh, if there is such a thing as karma that exists in this world, uh, Limby, as his friends like to call him, is uh, he's experiencing it right now. Um, the flip side, though, we were very sad to hear uh, about actress Shannon Doherty. Uh, revealing that she's got uh, stage four cancer, uh, breast cancer, three years after having previously gone into remission. That one was, you know, because I don't know about you, I was a uh, I was a very big nine hundred two one zero fan back in the day. What nine hundred two one zero and Melrose Place? Those those what? were my shows back in the college days. You genuinely watched oh, them? Oh yeah, yeah. Our whole my whole uh, my whole little uh, dorm room watched them. Oh my God! How could you not? Shannon I mean, Doherty, I would watch uh, this. Tori, uh, Hot. A- Tori Amos, um, Spelling, um, Jenny Garth, um, Hot. Gabriella Carteris, Hot. Luke Perry, I- Ian Ziering, um, Ted. Who else? Brendan Walsh. Who was that? Uh, the guy, the kid that uh, the actor. The Peach Pit. Anyway, Jason Priestley. Jason Priestley. Yes. Um, just Check a great me out show. with the not. Uh, and then you roll, and um, then you would I, roll right into Melrose Place with Heather Locklear and um, and and et al. I don't know. I can support you on that one. <laughs> I feel that there are a lot of people out there, more people that watched Melrose Place and nine hundred two one zero back in the day um, that you know don't admit that as as I proudly do. A lot of white people, but wasn't Jen already a major bitch? Um, it was, was it always pretty it much was, well established. It was always that alleged was. that the, that she created a lot of issues on set, um, and that's why she was eventually kind of written out of the show. But you know, you, you can never tell, Brian. You weren't there, and I'm not saying that she deserves stage four cancer. Nobody, well, Rush Limbaugh does, but nobody de- deserves to die um, of uh, cancer. It's just a, an awful, awful disease. Uh, Rush, uh, you know, I'm just glad that Rush has it. Um, wasn't a fan of Charmed though. Can I, can't say I ever watched that. Can't say I ever watched it either. I would say that I've uh, pre- I have successfully lived a life where uh, the WB network and myself <laughs> never crossed paths. We I think we both have to agree. Uh, Shannon Doherty probably had one of the hotter celebrity Playboy uh, spreads of all time. Ah uh, yes, I haven't seen that in years. It's been it's been a what long time. That, is that? Is that on the internet? Do you think? I, what isn't on the internet? It has to be on the internet. It's it's celebrity nudity. It has to be available somewhere. Would that be uh, found on mag- on magazinescans dot com? If not, probably Mr. Skin has it. You can always find good celebrity nudity on Mr. Skin. Wait a second, Mr. Skin is still a thing. Oh yeah, I don't think I don't think it's, I don't think it's as big as it used to be. Uh, because of the proliferation of, um, you know, free porn out Internet there. Internet pornography, yeah. Speaking of that, we forgot to uh, forgot to mention about the halftime show with uh, Shakira and J-Lo at the Super Bowl and how Pornhub search results went through the roof for both of those ladies. Uh, J-Lo went up 381%, while Shakira went up 1,401%. Uh, so Shakira, I, I mean, she pretty much won the... Uh... She won the Super Bowl. Yeah, you have to show. take that. Can we agree on that? I mean, both uh, both were were fantastic, but I think Shakira uh, just knocked it out of the park. 
Now she's also ten years younger than uh, than J Lo. Is it a fair fight? It's it's a valid it's a valid question. And then your girl Demi Lovato uh, only was up two hundred and seventy percent in Pornhub searches. Which it, she's it just, never done anything sexy, has no, she? No, no. I mean, but it just amazes me that you know people could go to Google and you know search for these ladies but there's a, a a large portion of the population that's like hey you know what i'm just going to cut to the chase and go to pornhub and see if there's anything i can find for them or you know at the very least if i can find a porn star that looks like shakira uh to, to spank myself to i think we've all been there now listen you know it's the beauty of uh, technology these days I guess so. What's the important thing and what's changed there during our life is that there's no longer a sense of shame that is attached. To no, it. I mean, porn has really, you know, when, when you think about it, you, you used to have to hide your VS, VHS tapes or your, your magazines yep. or what have you. Uh, now people will literally just watch it on their smartphone on the subway. Why did you look directly at me when you said that? Just, Why would you? What are you? I know you. I know you ride the subway, so I'm just assuming maybe you've seen other people doing that. It's hard to see other people when your face is covered in a coronavirus mask. <laughs> so I feel like I've, I, you know, I'm in a safe space at that moment. All right. Um, well, I don't think we have anything else. Really, I think we covered everything for this episode. Um, as always, we encourage you to go to RonAndBrianPodcast.com. That'll link you to our Facebook and Twitter pages for our drink of the week and this week in racism polls. If you go into the upper right corner, it's the link for our Patreon. If you want to subscribe monthly, you'll get some uh, some fantastic swag as well as awesome additional content, which we will be recording right after this episode. Um, you can you can tell from our listeners that have signed up on it. They find the value, and they don't get angry yes. at all when they have to wait a couple days for it. They're, they're all no. very reasonable, decent, God-fearing people. All right. Well, I don't have anything else this week. Uh, Brian, anything on your end? I'm good. Can't wait for uh, our first Tavor drink of the week. All right. Let's see what we put up against each other. <laughs>